Gigabyte's brand new Aorus 10,000 PCI Express Gen 5 SSD has just arrived in the UK. This particular example is heading off to Simon for a review for KitGuru. But before it goes to Simon, it would be rude if I didn't do a quick unboxing. So here we go. Behold, a wickedly fast SSD with a slightly bizarre name. How on earth can Gigabyte justify calling this SSD Aorus 10,000 after a quick run of Crystal Disk Mark 8? All becomes clear. We can see an enormous score beyond 10,000 in both read and write. Let's dig a little deeper and see what on earth Gigabyte has done to create this brand new super fast Gen 5 SSD. We're going to take a look at the information that Gigabyte has shared about the Aorus 10,000 SSD, and that will hopefully tell us what we can expect from this new super fast Gen 5 SSD, and indeed what makes it a Gen 5 SSD, and it should also help to reveal why this SATA SSD is just a piece of plastic with some stuff inside. This T-Force Gen 3 SSD has a little liquid cooler on top, this PNY Accelerate SSD has a fairly chunky air-cooled heatsink on the top. And the Aorus 10,000 comes with this absolutely enormous heatsink. After all, is one M.2 SSD not much like another M.2 SSD? No, of course it isn't. That's why we have Gen 3, Gen 4 and Gen 5. As we've established, the Aorus Gen 5 10,000 SSD gets its name from the enormous transfer rates that it can accomplish. 10,000 megabytes per second, or if you prefer, 10 gigabytes per second. So here we have the specification. The form factor M.2 2280 means it will fit most M.2 slots on most motherboards. Whether you have the Gen 5 interface that you require to make this drive work to its maximum effect, is of course down to your motherboard and processor. The interface is PCI Express Gen 5 times 4 the protocol that supported NVMe 2.0. Previous generations were NVMe 1.4 and 1.3, so we're taking quite a leap forward with this new protocol. Total capacity, either two terabytes or one terabyte. The controller is the brand new Fizon E26, which is of course at the heart of the matter in every sense of the word. The NAND or storage is 232 layer 3D TLC. In other words, it's not the slower QLC. But we would not expect QLC to live up to the performance claims of this drive. In fact, it's quite impressive. TLC can do the job and they haven't had to use MLC. Some details about the new Fizon E26, which is built on a 12 nanometer process. Previous models such as the E16 and the E12 used a 28 nanometer process, so the new E26 is quite a step forward. It has eight NAND flash channels, but that's been true from Fizon for quite some while. The last three or four controllers of theirs also had eight channels. Cache support is LP DDR4. Again, Fizon's been using DDR4 for the last few generations. The fact this is LP DDR4 rather than regular DDR4 should help to save on power. Gigabyte has selected what they call next generation NAND flash. In this instance, they're referring to the 232 layers of NAND. Some of the drives here only have 96 layers, so this allows for much denser storage. The enormous cooler supplied with the Aorus 10,000 has a name. It is M.2 Thermal Guard Extreme, all caps, with nanocarbon coating. The significant point here is if you're using an AIO cooler, you don't have much airflow around the processor socket. This SSD will inevitably be in the M.2 slot nearest to the processor. So to ensure that you get enough cooling, they include this huge cooler. And use of proper cooling ensures that you don't have any throttling with your new SSD. It would after all be a tragedy to spend a small fortune on the SSD and then to lose out on performance. And sadly, the two terabyte model is indeed a small fortune in the UK, £349.99. 
so Gigabyte is charging a premium for the Aorus 10,000 SSD. Gigabyte tells us their control center software plays a part in controlling your new SSD. Gigabyte also shows some motherboards that will go well with your new SSD, both Intel Z790 and AMD X670E. And then we see another table of the specification, basically repeating the information that we've already seen, but neatly encapsulated in a single table. As you will have guessed from that screen grab of Crystal Disk Mark 8, I've already run a couple of benchmarks on the new SSD, so let's just go through what I've been up to using a Gigabyte mm -hmm. test platform based on this X670E Aorus Extreme motherboard. The system's running on this Sabrent Rocket 4.0, which uses a Fizon E16 controller. It is Gen 4, and this SSD vanishes under this heatsink, which is going to be underneath the graphics card in short order. Four screws to lock it down. And that's the Sabrent undercover. The primary M.2 slot is under this tall finned heatsink just next to the CPU socket. So we'll take that off for the time being. Memory is G-Skill Trident ZRGB DDR5 rated at 6000. The cooler is a Corsair H150i Elite LCD and the CPU under the Corsair cooler is an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X. Graphics card is Gigabyte RTX 4080 Gaming OC. I used this graphics card in my recent review of the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D. And the power supply also from Gigabyte is a UD1000GM rated gold, 1000 watts, and it has a 12 volt high power connector which plugs into the latest graphics cards. This is not an ATX3 power supply. We have an ATX3 coming from Gigabyte very soon, which will be on full review. In fairness to the power supply manufacturers, Intel continues to update the ATX 3.0 standard with information about the 12 volt high power connector. So you have to have a degree of sympathy for them apparently taking their time to bring out the latest hardware. Let's take a look at what we can expect from an SSD. What's the difference between a fast SSD and a really fast SSD. We're going to start with this Kingston KC600. The interface is SATA 3.1, so as the Microsoft Game Bar in Windows 11 tells us, this drive does not support NVMe. That is by definition. SATA, NVMe, two different things. And this means that when we run the benchmark in the game Forspoken, we cannot take advantage of direct storage, which is a feature of NVMe SSDs. As the benchmark progresses, we can keep tabs on the load times for each of the scenes. The load times are significant, but far from awful. This is, after all, a perfectly competent SSD. It has a Silicon Motion SM2259 controller and TLC NAND. Read and write speeds are just over 500 megabytes per second, so it's perfectly competent. But of course, compared to an M.2 NVMe SSD, it's nothing particularly special. Switching over to the T-Force Cardia Liquid, this is a PCI Express Gen 3 SSD, and we can see it does indeed support NVMe. So direct storage is going to work with this drive. As the benchmark runs, we see significantly faster load times. This SSD uses a Fizon E12 controller. That's the old one on 28 nanometers. It supports NVMe 1.3 and it has TLC NAND. Read speeds about 3500 megabytes per second and write about 3000 megabytes per second. Significantly faster than the KC600 from Kingston. However, it's not a patch on Gen 4 or Gen 5. Moving up to the PNY Accelerate Gaming CS3140, we now have a PCI Express Gen 4 SSD that comes with its own finned heatsink. This uses the Fizon E18 controller, so it's on the new 12 nanometer process, and supports NVMe 1.4. The read speed is faster than 7,000 megabytes per second, and the write speed is about 5,500 megabytes per second. Despite hardware that is considerably more effective than the T-Force Cardia Liquid Gen 3 SSD, the load times in Forspoken have barely changed at all. And now it's time for the big kahuna, the Gigabyte Aura's 10,000 PCI Express Gen 5 SSD. We're using the finned heatsink that comes with the motherboard rather than the enormous heatsink that's in the package, 
We're going to leave that pleasure for Simon in his review. So the SSD uses the new Fizon E26 controller and it supports NVMe 2.0. PCI Express Gen 5 of course and 232 layer TLC NAND. As you've seen the read and write speeds are faster than 10,000 megabytes per second. And yet once again the load times in Forspoken haven't changed from the Gen 3 and Gen 4 SSDs. Let's pull all that information together in a slightly complicated chart. So the game is Forspoken, resolution is 1440p and we're using the ultra high preset. We have from top to bottom the Gigabyte Gen 5 SSD, then the PMY Accelerate Gen 4. We also have the Sabrent Rocket Gen 4 that you've seen is under the main heatsink on the motherboard. And below that we have the T-Force Cardio Liquid Gen 3. At the bottom we have the Kingston KC600 SATA SSDs. The four coloured bands are the load times for each of the four scenes that we're looking at. And the results are fairly clear. The Kingston KC600 SATA drive has load times that are about twice as long as the M.2 NVMe SSDs. Beyond that you can barely separate the four M.2 SSDs and you certainly cannot tell Gen 3 from Gen 4 from Gen 5. For fun I've added another drive to the equation. This is a Seagate hard drive which has a USB 3 interface and as you can see it blows the scale to pieces. This drive takes far longer to load the scenes. So it is crystal clear an SSD is good and an NVMe SSD is better. After those slightly inconclusive results in Forspoken we're going to turn to Crystal Disk Mark 8 because that spits out good reliable numbers and it shows us interesting things. As I run each of the SSDs, starting with the Kingston KC600, I'm also using the manufacturer's SSD utility, as you can see on screen. This tells us the health of the drive, firmware version, and also the temperature of the drive. Although in the case of the KC600, the temperature is neither here or there, as it runs icy cool. The performance of the KC600 is exactly what we expect from a modern SATA SSD, i.e. it's reasonably fast but is not a patch on an M.2 NVMe SSD. The read speed is 566 megabytes per second and the write speed 516 megabytes per second. Moving up to the team group T-Force Cardia Liquid, this is the Gen 3 SSD the speeds are significantly faster. The temperature climbs very slightly but is absolutely nothing to concern us and the final result is that the read speed is 3451 megabytes per second approximately 3.5 gigabytes per second and the write speed is a tiny fraction under 3 gigabytes per second. The Sabrent Rocket 4.0 which is the C drive on this PC and also is running the operating system performs just as we'd expect for a Gen 4 SSD that is essentially a reference drive from Fizen. The read speed is just under 5 gigabytes per second, the write speed 2.5 gigabytes per second. Good solid performance and perfectly reasonable temperatures. The PNY Accelerate is a completely different story. It's still Gen 4, but this is the Fizon E18 controller in action. This is what I regard as a true Gen 4 SSD rather than an updated Gen 3 to Gen 4 SSD. And it absolutely storms along. The read speed is past 7 gigabytes per second. The write speed, 5.5 gigabytes per second. This is truly impressive performance. But of course it doesn't compare to the Gigabyte Aorus 10,000 SSD. This Gen 5 drive delivers huge performance past 10 gigabytes per second in both read and write. I'm not mad keen on the Gigabyte Control Center software. That great big 100, if you look closely, actually says 100%, i.e. the health of the drive is 100%. I keep seeing 100 degrees Celsius, but it's not that. In actual fact the temperature does appear to get rather hot using the motherboard heatsink but the heatsink itself is cool to the touch. I suspect the Gigabyte Control Center software isn't reporting the temperature accurately. Certainly the drive itself showed no signs of thermal throttling. 
And putting those figures in a chart is dead straightforward. At the bottom we have the Kingston KC600 SATA SSD. Stepping forward by a huge margin, the T-Force Cardia Liquid PCR Express Gen 3 with the Fizon E12 controller. And then we have the Sabrent Rocket 4.0 Gen 4 SSD with the Fizon E16. Above that, a healthy margin ahead, we have the PNY Accelerate Gaming PCR Express Gen 4 with the Fizon E18. And at the top of the chart, by an enormous margin, the Gigabyte Aorus 10,000 PCI Express Gen 5 with the new Fizon E26 controller. Let's take a quick look at temperatures. At the bottom of the chart, i.e. the coolest, we have the Kingston KC600 at 26 Celsius, only a few degrees above ambient. It's a small step up, to the T-Force Cardia Liquid. This is the SSD of that slightly peculiar liquid cooled block that gives the SSD its name, but the fact is this SSD uses very little power and requires very little cooling. Then we have the two Gen 4 SSDs. The PNY has its own rather large cooler and uses a newer controller, while the Sabrent Rocket is under the motherboard heatsink and uses an older controller, Despite that, the temperatures of these two SSDs almost identical. At the top of the chart, with an apparently alarming 80 degrees Celsius figure, we have the Gigabyte Aorus 10,000. As I said earlier, I suspect the Gigabyte software is telling us porkies. The drive did not feel at all hot, and it did not begin to throttle. I have my doubts about this figure. 15 minutes ago you started to watch an unboxing of this Gigabyte Aorus 10,000 Gen 5 SSD and then I got sidetracked and it became something else. But whatever this video has been, it's now done. We're finished. So I'm going to pack up the SSD along with its enormous finned cooler and I'm going to send it off to Simon Crisp so he can do a review and tell you what he thinks about this SSD. And that's good because Simon's a professional. And then you'll know whether or not you should spend £349.99 on a 2TB Gen 5 SSD. Or not. But whatever Simon says, believe you me, it's damned impressive.